I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. This video is by special request. Uh, we got a comment and uh, we do read the comments that come in and the comment asked for uh, a continuation of the automation series that we did. And in that automation series, we talked about how to deploy things with ARM templates. And we started off very simple and got to a, a very complex deployment. And one of the things that was asked was to show how we could do this integrating with a online code repository like uh, VSTS or now called Azure DevOps and how we could use a release pipeline to actually manage that deployment lifecycle. So what I thought I would start with here is uh, this is the set of templates that we used in our video on the Azure Firewall. And as you can see here, we're deploying a hub and spoke VNet, a routing table, storage account, and two VMs, and the firewall itself. And the parameter inputs are quite simple, just a name and a password for the servers that we're deploying, as well as an IP range that'll dictate how the address spaces are set up and all the subnets on the virtual networks. So this is a pretty simplistic template uh, that would be very easy to show and how we can connect this out to uh, VSTS. And so what I wanted to start off with here in Visual Studio, and of course, if you use a different tool, it'd be slightly different, but in here we have the Team Explorer. And this is where I have connected to a particular uh, repository, and this is my repository in Visual Studio, and I've got uh, a bunch of different stuff in here, and this is my firewall, and that looks like over in my Visual Studio team services, or now again called Azure DevOps. Here's all my repositories, and if I go into the firewall repository, and then we go to files under repos, you can see it looks like all the same content. Okay, and if we open up one of these files, you can see it's the same code. I've uploaded all of my files here to this repo. And then of course you can manage uh, different branches of the repo. Uh, you could also look at um, here some of the history of the repo. These are all the, the different pull requests that I've put in. Uh, and these were just going through in a, a testing phase. so very small tweaks that I made, but you can see things. Uh, here's the, the line of code that was changed. Here's what it was changed to. So it does color code of these things. And then uh, if I go back here and I'll just look at another commit. So you can see all the, the changes that I made here and showing me the side-by-side -side differences, or you could set this up uh, to just look at the inline differences. So I prefer side-by-side. -side. But anyway, uh, setting up a new repo itself is actually pretty simple. So in your VSTS account, you can create yourself a new project here, create project, and we'll just call this uh, test. And this is a test and this is a private repo, or you can choose to make it public and then choose what kind of version and control you want. Git is more of a decentralized repository, meaning I have a copy of the code, you have a copy of the code, and then we make pull requests and then we, we talk to each other just like GitHub works. Now in Visual Studio or Team Foundation version control, it's the opposite. There is a centralized repository where the code lives and I make changes and then I do requests and you have somebody who manages the code centrally and decides what requests should be accepted and denied, etc. So I'm going to stick with Git and then you can choose which kind of work item process you use. I like Agile, so I'm going to hit create. Okay, and just like that, we have a new repository. Okay, so if we go to our files here in the repo, now there's nothing here currently, so what it's telling us here is I can go to my computer and I can do this, or I can hit clone into Visual Studio, or clone into any one of these other tools that I use. Uh, I just do it with Visual Studio myself. And there you go, Visual Studio is gonna open and it's gonna to connect to that repo and ask me to sign in, etc., which I'm not gonna do at the moment. Okay, so that's how we create a new repository. Now, once you have that repository, you would get another uh, managed connection here saying that you've got a new repository and I can just add one here if I want. And this is kind of the opposite way of doing it, um, but you can do it in either fashion. So I would just open my repo here and then click on test and connect. And then when you connect, 
then it's going to ask you for a location okay and i'll store the code here and then you hit clone okay now there's currently nothing in that repository so there will be very little to actually clone and then once you have that all set up then you can go back in and you can actually create yourself a VS project and then you can kick it off from there. So what I'm going to do instead right now is go back to my firewall. All right, so that brings us back to our code. So here we are. Now we've got this uh, synchronized so that we're connected to our online repository. Okay, so we're back here now in our firewall repo. With this now we wanna set up our repository so that when we make a commit from Visual Studio, we want that to initiate a build. So for that, we need the pipeline. Now the pipeline has several different components to it. Uh, the one of which that is necessary for Azure Resource Manager templates by themselves is the release pipeline. So a build pipeline would be where you have to actually compile something. So in this case, we don't have to do any of that. Okay, we have no packages that we're pushing. We're just pushing uh, templates. So we're gonna create a new pipeline. Okay, and we're just gonna start with an empty job here. And we'll call this deploy firewall. Okay, and then you can make comments along the way when you do saves. So we'll give this release pipeline a name, deploy AZ firewall. And then we have to give it some artifacts. So the artifacts are going to come from our repo. And we'll select our firewall repo here. And we'll select our source. And then it's going to select for us a branch. If we have more than one branch, we can select that. And then check out from the latest of the branch. And then you can have a source alias here, which I'm fine with just keeping the original name and hitting add. The artifact has to trigger the job. So we want the commit from Visual Studio when we push out our changes to be the trigger that says go deploy into Azure. So for that we click on this item here and that's our trigger. So that's going to be a pull request trigger. We're going to hit that and we're going to select that for our master branch. And we've got a little warning here that says this stage Okay, this stage that we're dealing with here is not enabled yet for pull request deployments. You can enable this based on deployment into pre-deployment conditions of that stage. So for that, within the stage, we got to click on this icon, which is the pre-deployment condition. And so here's our trigger. We can have this be manual, meaning we go in here and we kick off a deployment manually, or after release, which is the commit from Visual Studio, which is what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to have this be a pull request deployment, and we're going to enable that. And then we go back to our trigger here, and you can see that that has now been satisfied. When you go in here to your stage, there are other things that we can do to, to add some other functionality. You can add uh, build-in variables to deploy to dev or prod environments and have them be different deployment locations, things like that, all kinds of steps that you can take. So for right now, we'll just go with that. And now let's go up here to tasks. And you can see in our tasks, we have an agent job. So what is this? So when you deploy something, whether it be from Azure CLI, PowerShell, REST API, Visual Studio, VS Code, the portal itself, something must talk to Azure and say, here's a deployment that I want you to do. From Visual Studio or PowerShell or Azure CLI or VS Code, all of this happens by you with your permissions kicking off the job. When it comes to Azure DevOps or GitHub, we have to enable the system to be able to do that. And that's what an agent is. Now, there are different kinds of agents you can use a pooled agent, you can install agent onto a container, to a Windows VM, to a Linux VM. So I'm fine with using just a pooled agent right now, and I don't need to add anything extra special to this, so the defaults here are fine. So now what we want to do is we'll just save this, and we're going to hit the plus sign here, resource group deployment, and we'll hit add. Okay, so now what it wants is a name to display here. So what we're gonna say is deploy AZ firewall. 
and then we need some details so our subscription that we're going to deploy to and then a particular resource group so now are we going to create a brand new one are we going to have a existing resource group we're going to do a create or update and then the resource group name that we're going to type in here is going to be az firewall and it will create the resource group for us and we're going to put that in east us and now it wants to know what is the artifact what's the template is this file existing in a storage account or on github or is it something that's linked to visual studio in our case it's linked so we'll hit the little ellipse here and it goes into our repo and then we can select our particular files so we'll select our azure firewall.json and then we'll feed it our same parameters file okay and then if you want to override the parameter and this is uh, an instance where you might do this if you were using variables and deploying to different environments but I'm just giving you a overview here so we're gonna skip that uh, our deployment mode again if you choose incremental then that will be a quote unquote normal deployment a complete deployment will say anything that's here I'm gonna wipe it out and I'm gonna replace it with this okay so do not use complete mode unless you really 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 know what you're doing okay because you could inadvertently delete things so uh, and then there's validation only so I'm gonna use an incremental and then uh, are there any other additional prerequisites for this no in my case there are not and then I don't need any particular outputs or anything else so this is good enough for me so I'm gonna save this okay and when I look at my history here we can see that I've got comments uh, just like we do in the code repo okay so we're pretty much ready to go here so let's go back and uh, or actually we'll we'll just go to our release right here now we can actually create a release all right so this is staged so we know what we're doing and we have the right triggers for it we could create a release directly from here but our intention was to go and do this from visual studio so i'm going to make a edit to the code here uh let's see how about uh we just delete a period and so we've got a red check here that says that there's a pending edit and then we go to our changes and we say and then we'll do a sync and that'll push our code that's all successful and now our release should trigger on its own in a second here and uh, so right now this is the Azure portal you see I do not have an AZ firewall resource group currently okay so there's our release and that's in progress now if we go back to Azure and you can see we've got our AZ firewall and that's already building our resources and it's going through a normal deployment and then as it's going through or even afterwards you can look at the log files here and you can see it does the same kind of things that happen uh, during a, a normal deployment process the files are packaged they are sent up to Azure and they are staged for deployment and then the deployment begins and then the agent sits here waiting for a response from the portal which is basically what you'd get looking through all this here so currently uh, let's see if we check our deployment status here we go we've built most of our resources we're just waiting on our servers to complete and the firewall itself so that's basically it in a nutshell we'll just wait uh, until this completes here okay so our deployment has completed successfully and we can look at all of our logs here and they would show us uh, that the deployment was successful for this template and uh, you could look through any of the other logs here that you wanted or download them for future use all right so looking back here at the portal deployment succeeded we've got our boxes here up and running we've got our firewall configured and we'll just take a look at the rules real quick so you can see we've got a couple NAT rules and network rule and app rules so this is all configured out of our template and it looks like everything worked correctly so there you go that's how to do a release from visual studio causing then a trigger to make azure devops perform a deployment of our templates artifacts from our repo 
to the cloud, all integrated together as a single solution. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, give us a thumbs up if you thought it was cool and give us a thumbs down if you think it stunk and we could do something better. And give us some comments, subscribe, hit the notification button. We drop a video roughly once a week. Let us know what you're interested in. And uh, this video again was by request. Let me know what, it, what else you're interested in and I'll put it together. Happy learning.